Meccano, part number 22, one inch pulley with a boss. Hi folks and welcome back. This week we have, as the name might have suggested, the field gun from the 1970s army multi-kit set. It is a passable resemblance to a British army 25 pounder and limber. And for this kit, I don't think Meccano dug very deep to find the example. It is just about a rehash of their 18 pounder quick firing field gun and limber from the 1939 Meccano Army Constructor set. With the main difference being the barrel. In the 1939 set they used turned wood and it didn't fire. And with this build, of course, we have a mechanism that works. Growing up I played a lot with toy soldiers before expanding into wargaming. And in my collection of troops, I have various working field guns from First World War 18 pounders made by the Crescent Toy Company through to 25 pounders made by the Britain's Detail Range. They also include working mortars. And battles were fought across my bedroom floor with buildings made out of cardboard cereal boxes, hedges and walls raided from the Britain's farm set, along with animals. I always wanted to borrow my sister's Britain's trees as, as they were in scale, but knew the borrowing would also enact a swift revenge and being older than me, she hit harder and was also our father's favourite. So the double whammy of being told off by our dad just wasn't worth it. The shells fired from these field guns were broken matchsticks hoarded carefully from when the fire was lit during the winter. Until one Christmas I got a matchwood craft set. It was a siege tower and a few other models to make. It was to become my stockpile of ammunition. Little did I know I was enacting, in essence, the same rules that H.G. Wells had for his little soldiers' battles. As my collection grew, the battlefields expanded, and one day, while on campaign in the garden of what was, at the time, my best friend, a geopolitical disagreement ensued over who was and wasn't a casualty of that round of bombardment. The International Peacekeeping Force intervened in, in the form of their parents, and I was told to go home. My force was returned later in the day, reduced by around 50%. I was devastated. Needless to say, when appealing to the greatest force known to nature, my mum, I was told that things like this happened in life. They are only toys. They can be replaced. But they were my toys that I'd painted to the best of my abilities. Oh boy, were they well painted. Or maybe covered well in paint, quite a lot of it. In the end, we ceased to be best mates for quite a long time. I can laugh about it now, but at the time, I wanted my toy tanks to be real toy tanks. So, so we could mount a rescue op and save the troops that were lost behind enemy lines. I never did get them back. And sitting right in this now, some 40 years later, I can still remember some of the loss that I felt at the time. Funny that. So what is a field gun? Artillery is divided into three groups until post-World War II. The first is siege, the heaviest of artillery. Requiring more support, it is normally constructed at the site it is to be used on. And once in place, cannot be recited with ease. It is by far the heaviest of all of the artillery trains. Then we have garrison or coastal artillery in place within heavy fortifications. If you've ever watched the 1957 film, The Guns from Navarone, you will get the idea. These heavy guns are the largest calibre, frequently naval guns from battleships, were emplaced in set forts with a view of guarding a strategic location. And then we have field guns. These lighter guns were of a weight that could be taken into battle and used practically by soldiers in the field. The greatest evolution in this type of gun 
came from the European conflicts of the French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic Wars as Bonaparte redesigned field artillery and Europe was plunged into nearly quarter of a century of constant warfare with the French. And while it might seem strange to say that as a ruler of a nation he did it, in truth Napoleon had a great love of artillery and with his military commanders and designers redesigned how artillery was to be manufactured and used in the field. The French Revolutionary Wars and the Napoleonic campaigns saw a number of new ideas. With the creation of the Royal Horse Artillery in 1793, their main role to be able to provide fire support to fast moving cavalry, which until this point had been left to fend for themselves in the field, or at best act as a picket on the flanks of the battle, as the musket lines faced off against each other. The ability of fast moving artillery was proven again and again during the campaign, as tactical situations changed quickly in the more fluid form of modern warfare. Over the next 100 years, till the outbreak of the First World War, field artillery improved. But by the Second World War, the calibre of field guns had increased in size almost overnight, with ranges increasing over 30 miles beyond line of sight. During the Second Boer War in 1899, the British-held city of Ladysmith was besieged by some 21,000 soldiers of the Boer Republics, outnumbering the British forces by nearly two to one. Outgunned with heavy caliber guns, urgent help was needed. General Redvia's Buller made three attacks to break the siege, but it took 118 days to finally bring the siege to an end. A relief column under the command of Major Hubert Goff arrived on the evening of the 28th of February, along with the war correspondent Winston Churchill, later to be the Prime Minister of Britain. Another relief column was under the command of Captain Hedworth Lambton, Royal Navy, from HMS Terrible, with assistance from HMS Powerful. The naval brigade of 280 men brought up four 12-pounder guns and two 4.7-inch guns. The guns, all stripped from the ships, needed to have gun mounts made for them. This work was carried out by Percy Scott. One of his problems was to find a way of communicating with Lady Smith. This was achieved by mounting a searchlight on a truck and rigging a Venetian blind in front of it. With a salvaged dynamo, the Royal Navy was able to send signals to the besieged city. The mounting of the guns was a problem as there was no time to manufacture steel bodywork to make a gun carriage. Percy Scott made the frames out of wood, bound with steel straps, each gun weighing around the weight of a car. Then the next job was to get them to Ladysmith. This was done by manhandling the guns from the ships at the city of Durban to the siege at Ladysmith, a distance of 120 miles, mainly by train, but the last distance from the railhead to the front was manually done, mostly by oxen. Crossing rivers in flood, rough countryside and hostile areas, all the while in a state of constant warfare. This they achieved, bringing the guns to bear on Boer positions. The relief of the siege of Ladysmith was overshadowed by the relief of Mafeking, which lasted for 217 days and made Robert Baden Powell famous. But the achievement of the Naval Brigade is still amazing. There is an event still held within the British Armed Forces. It is that of the Field Gun Competition. Originally starting after the Boer War in recognition of what was achieved by the Naval Brigade, it grew into a yearly challenge for the closing moments of the Royal Tournament. Following the command format, where crews would have to cross five foot barriers bridge a 28 foot chasm and fire three shots then repeat the exercise to get back to the other end of the arena. Each gun weighs around half a ton and is one of the six pounders used in the Boer War. In 1999 after over 100 years the Royal Tournament was brought to a close 
due to the cost of running it. The challenge is still held at Crown Hill Fort at Portsmouth and is still maintained by the Devonport Field Gun Association. While the command format competition seems never to return as a military event, the second competition, named Brickwood's Field Gun Competition in memory of Brickwood Brewery, is still held annually. While not being as intense as the command format, the Brickwood's competition is still a challenge to even the fittest of athletes. Since 2017, there have been several civilian teams formed as well. These teams compete against each other in a command format competition. Post World War II, the large calibre field gun would slowly be phased out, with most armies field guns in the 105 to 155 mm range. The main reason for the phase out of heavy calibre guns was down to improvements of guided rockets and missiles being able to launch at greater ranges and be guided to pinpoint accuracy. The same is true of standard towed artillery, with newer guns having the ability to fire munitions that are capable of hitting the exact same place with 100% accuracy. Percy Scott's work on creating a gun carriage capable of housing the heavier guns, like the 4.7 inch, will be carried on into the First World War and replicated in beautiful working miniature by Britons Limited in the form of their 4.7 inch naval gun. If you don't have one, you need one, as a great afternoon can be had firing matchsticks at paper targets, or even 132nd scale toy soldiers as you replicate famous historic battles. But in any event, this was a great build and one that I really enjoyed. At the time of writing this, I only have one more army kit set build to complete the missile launching truck and then we're off into space with either the space 2501 set or the hyperspace set Thank you. 